Hey guys, it is Carl Brown for Guitar Lessons 365.com. Got another classic track from Slayer today. We're gonna learn how to do Seasons in the Abyss. Now this one has got some absolutely killer riffs in it. I'm sure you guys already know if you clicked on this video. And if you have clicked on the video, I appreciate it. Please watch the whole thing. It really helps the YouTube algorithm. Like and comment on it. It really, really helps YouTube push out to more people. And if you really wanna support what I do here on YouTube, Join my Guitar Academy. You're gonna see a link to that in the description. And that link will give you a free seven day trial uh, to all of my guitar courses in the Academy. One subscription gives you free access to all the courses. And um, you know, weekly live streams with me and uh, more personal support from me as well. So please go check it out. All right, so let's get into the track. We are in E flat standard tuning. So every string tuned down a half step. So that's the E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, B flat, B flat. So I'll put the notes in the description there uh, so you can uh, easily dial that in. And let's start here. So this intro actually starts out with one riff and then it becomes two riffs and it becomes three riffs, all kind of layered onto one another. So the first one you hear is this. Really happy stuff. So anyway, we're gonna start here with this um, E power chord. So just the open E string and the second fret there on the A. And then you're gonna have, you can hit the, the open uh, high E and B string together. So with this. Then. So that's just, I'm, I'm holding the second fret there on the A and the D string. So I'm gonna pick the one on the A, then the D. And then it's the first fret, you can do a slow half step bend and release at the first fret on the A. And now you can do that with your index finger. I like to kind of come over with my uh, middle finger and just pull it downward. And then release it with some vibrato there. So whatever you do, you might want to switch up the fingers because you, if you practice it a lot, it's, it can really it's right there at the, the nut. So it's a lot of string tension there. So it's really hard to do um, over and over again without getting your fingers blistered. So we have this. And then we're just going to come down to this, um, I'm going to call it, I know, an F power chord, but even though we're tuned differently, so it's technically an E power chord, but it looks like an F, so we're going to call it an F. So just a power chord with the first fret of the low E string a couple times. And that's the riff, just repeat. Alright, so after you do that a couple times, you have another riff that comes in with it. So that riff that comes in is going to be the open E and the first fret there. So zero one on the open e, uh, on the E string, and then play three two on the A string. And then the rest of it is kind of like the previous riff. So it's just that beginning. We still have that riff going that just goes with that. So we have. So after you've done that a couple times, you have this that comes in with it, so all three things are going on at once. So that's gonna be the 15th fret there on the D string, over to 14 on the G. Then play 17, 16 on the G. So now you can. I've seen more more recent live videos. Not with the um, I forget. I don't know. Forget the guitar player's name that replaced Jeff Henneman. Um, he was playing it like this, where she's just going. Thir um, sorry, fifteen, fourteen on the D, and the rest the same. 
Uh, but on the recording, there's that 14 on the D. It's actually 14 on the G. Like that. So it's still 15 on the D, 14 on the G. And then from there, you're going to pick the 16th fret on the G again, over to 17 there on the B string. And then a really slow half step bend release at the 15th fret there on the uh, G string. Just like. Goes with that. So we have this. All right, so that's uh, part of the intro, and then we get to this clean guitar part, which sounds really cool. Um, and then we have some uh, chords that come in beneath this after you play this for a few times. So the clean guitar part looks like this. Repeat that. So what's going on there? We're gonna hold the second fret there on the D and the third fret there on the G. And then we're gonna have the open B and open high E. So the picking pattern, you're gonna pick from the D string to the G, B, high E. So pick from the D all the way to the high E. And then B, G. And then you're gonna end it with picking the D string back to the G. So it's an eight note pattern. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So. And just repeat it there on the same chord. And then all you're gonna do for the second chord is you're gonna move the note from the on the D string from the second fret up to the third fret. Keep the note on the G string the same, and then the same picking pattern done twice. Actually, just once. Here we have this. So you just did that picking pattern once on the, the new chord. And then what you're gonna do is gonna reach over, now that third fret on the D, move it over to the third fret on the A. And you're just gonna pick straight across here though. It's gonna be a four note picking pattern. So you're still leaving that note here at the third fret there on the G string. You're gonna pick the third fret on the A, then that third fret there on the G, the open B and high E. So that's it. That's the picking pattern, and then you do the same picking pattern, but with a note at the second fret on the A. So we have. So we put it all together. alternate picking across the strings. Uh, you don't really have to do it like that. You can just do like down, 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 up, 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 down, up. It's some easier. It's easier to kind of get across the strings like that. So you're doing more downs and ups in a row. Uh, I like to alternate pick just because rhythmically it feels better. But I realize it's harder to do. So either way, sounds fine. I don't think Carrie. I think Carrie King. He kind of does a little mixture of both. Um, so while you continue this, you have some chords that come in underneath it um, that look like this. So this is going on underneath the clean guitar part. So we're gonna start here with just the E power chord, low E power, and then the F power chord there off the uh, first fret of the low E. And then what they do is they go to a C power chord, which is the third fret there on the A, and you can grab the fifth fret there on the uh, D as well. But they add the fifth in the bass. 
So that's the third fret there on the low E as well. And then take that chord down. Uh, one fret on B power chord with the fifth in the bass. Now, I can't really pick it up. They could be playing that top note or just playing those two notes. The third fret there on the A and the E in the second. That'll work too. I like adding a note on top too. So we have this. Repeat that. And then we're gonna jump up here and grab this octave here at the seventh fret off the A string. So seventh fret on the A, ninth fret there on the G. Kind of strum that a little bit. And then move that up to the F octave here at the one fret higher. And the same two chords in it. And repeat. And then from there, we get to the main riff. So that was all kind of really building up to that main riff. Now the main riff, a lot of fun to play. So let me play through it really for you real quick, and then I'll show you how to play it. So here we go. Again, getting ahead of myself. That's the killer verse riff. All right, so let's do this uh, main riff here. We're gonna start here with this. Uh, so zero, so all pretty much on the low E string. Zero, two, three. Then zero, two, three, five. And then back to the zero, two, three. Let's go this. And back to the open E. So zero, two, three. Zero, two, three, five. Then zero, two, three, zero. From there, we're gonna come over here and grab this, the second fret there on the A and the D string. So hit those two strings. And then you're gonna play three zero on the low E string, kind of palm it. And then down to the first fret on the A and the D. So smack that chord. And then hit the second fret there on the low E. So we hit this. So all together. that fast. All right, so then we get to the verse riff, which looks like this. Uh, actually, I'm sorry, at the end of the main riff there, instead of going, so we go. There's a little ending thing that takes us to the verse. Uh, we kind of play this whenever we're getting ready to go to the verse um, or repeat the verse. So that's just this regular power chord. So you don't do, the, you don't do that ending. Stop right here on the low E. Come up and grab the regular power chord off the fourth fret of the low E, and then the third fret. And then we get to that verse riff, which is played without vocals a couple times, and then with vocals. All right, so it's kind of that done twice. So we have, uh, we're gonna start with this. So we're gonna start with this E power chord, and you're gonna hit the, the so the E power chord is the low E string, second fret on the A and the e, D, but you can just hit the string notes on the A and the D first. So you're gonna pick those two, then do a down up on kind of a muted low E string. 
And then you go back and hit the second fret there on the A and the D together. And then take it down to the first fret. So this. And then just straight down strokes there on the low E string, like the four of them. And then you do the riff again. But it goes like that. So it's going to start the same. But instead of going here, you're going to go hit this F power chord. So it's got to quickly grab the first fret on the low E and the third on the A and the D. And then go right back to the E. So this. And then uh, you're back to the same as the first time through. So wait this. So. So you always end up with those four hits on the low E string. And then we have this. Which is kind of this. That hit done it twice on the E power chord. And then we have this ending on it, which is the third fret there across the low E and the A. And then the first fret of the A and the E. So, so all together for the riff. Then you repeat the riff, but you're going to replace these two chords at the end with just a normal power chord off the fourth fret of the low E and the third fret. So that's when you repeat the riff the second time, just replace that ending with that. So we have this all together. Vocals come in, and he just repeats the exact same thing. And that takes us to the, the chorus. The first chorus is different than the rest of the chorus sections in the song. Uh, later on, they're going to add like a little harmony part, uh, which we'll talk about in the second chorus. But the first chorus is just straight power chords. So it looks like this. All right, so that's going to start with this uh, E power chord, then third fret, just all power chords off the low E string. Zero, three, two, then three, two, zero. And then you'll end it with one, four, and to get back to the beginning, three, two, and then repeat. So this. Then it goes back to the verse riff. So we've covered that. And then we get to the chorus again, right out of that verse, the second verse there. We get back to the chorus. This chorus is different. So it's just the only thing that's, there's this, one guitar will still continue doing what we did in the first chorus, just straight power chords. The other one on the second and third chords going to a little, uh, just a little bit different. So it looks like this. So the rest of it's the same. So it's just that second and third chord right here. And then the same. 
So the second chord there is instead of just playing the third fret power chord and the second fret power chord, you're gonna play the third fret there on the low E string and then play the third above it, which is the second fret there on the A. And then you're gonna play the second fret on the low E and the second fret on the A. So this. And then everything else in the chorus is the same as the first one. So that's the only difference there, and you're gonna hear that in the remaining chorus sections of the song. All right, and then we get to the, the main riff again, that little. And then we get to the solo section. So the first solo is by Carrie King. Um, and that this one has a little bit different uh, riff, riff under it. Uh, kind of change the key a little bit. So that looks like, I'll play the, the riff that's being played by Jeff underneath uh, Carrie's solo before we do the solo. So it looks like this. So we're up here around this F power chord. So it's the same rhythm that's happening in the, pretty much the same pattern, picking pattern and everything, it's happening in the verse. Uh, but instead of based off of an E power chord, it's based off of an F. So that first fret on the low E and third on the A and the D. So you go. So same thing. But as, uh, here we're gonna go from the third fret down to the first fret there on across the A and the D. So it is. And then you're gonna start chugging on on this F there at the low E, on the first fret of the low E. So it is. And then you repeat that. And then the third time through we had this kind of lifts up and gets this, the instead of this as being the last chord, it's the open A and open D string. So with this. And you come back down and grab that F there at the first fret. So with this so far. And here, the last time we're instead of grabbing this open or the first, we're gonna come over here and grab the fourth fret across the um, the A and the E. So with this. So it's kind of very similar, you kind of stay on the F the whole time, you're just going to that first fret the first two times, then the open D and A the second, the third time, and the fourth time, at the fourth fret on the low E and the A. So let's all together one more time. Repeat that four times. All right, so that's going on underneath Kerry King's solo. Now let's uh, take a look at the solo. Now with a lot of these solos uh, from Slayer, it's kind of hard, hard to get the solos just absolutely note for note. The uh, the picking is a lot of time. If it's fast picking, it's heavily muted and um, uh, kind of hard to pick up exactly. So usually it's kind of uh, this style of playing. It's always a little bit of an approximation of what they're doing. You can't get exactly note for note, but we get pretty close. All right, so. Uh, let me play through Carrie's solo for you real quick, and then I'll show you how to play it. So as you can see, it's one of those things that's just kind of impossible to get exactly like he's doing it. Um, but anyway, so we're gonna start here with a bend at the 18th fret there on the high E string. And on that third bend, I just, it was a whole step bend, I just released it a half step and then brought it back up. So it, then he has the open B string. 
a little bit of a whammy bar on it, and then he's gonna catch a, an, a harmonic. About, really, it's kind of like a 3.2 fret, so like a little bit above the first. 3.3, maybe? It's hard to get. Let's go nuts with it. It's a hard one. So about 3.2, so those are never easy to get. All right, and then as he does that, he kind of is like, he's kind of strumming the low E string, it sounds like, and he's just kind of gliding up it without really pushing it down. He's kind of catching some harmonics. You can see him do this in the video, and then he goes. So from there, we have a little lick at the end of that. Which is kind of. Kind of 17, tw uh, I'm sorry, 1922 a couple times on the B to 19 on the high E. And then uh, a bend of the 22nd fret there on the, the high E. Now here, he does this descending line and there's a couple things going on that make it hard to get exactly the, like what he's doing. One is there's a delay being added to it so the notes are repeating. Uh, when when he's not actually playing, so there's a pretty loud delay, and then there's also uh, or an echo you can call it, and then there's uh, it's really heavily palm muted, especially on the ending ascending lick. So um, for that reason, we're gonna kind of trace it down what he's doing. I think it's our, you really quickly hear a little bit of a uh, 19, 17, 15 on the high E, but then the true picking pattern starts. It's pretty. Something like that. So we kind of just play 18, 17, 15 twice on the high E. Then uh, once on the B. Then we're gonna go um, 17, 15, 14 on the G and then repeat that 15, 14. So we have this. So this is obviously palm muted. Um, but then as you keep going down, you can go 17, 15, 14 on the D, and then shift down to the 12th fret. So 17, 15, 14, 12. And then it goes down to 15, 13, 12 on the A, then repeat that 13, 12, and then. Then 15, 13, 12 on the low E, and then come back and end it. The descending run ends on that 13th fret there on the low E. So it's kind of like that. Now the one on the, the ascending version, you can hear where he starts and you can hear where he ends. In between, it's kind of like. There's not, it's just, I mean, he's, he's obviously, you know, picking fast, but you can't really pick up the notes. It's just way heavily palm muted, has delays on it. So, I'm gonna approximate it. So, basically, all I'm doing here is I'm just kind of using it those 10, 12, 13 on the low E and the A. Then 10, 12 on the D. And then, uh, I'm gonna end it with that 10, 13 on the G. So, we're gonna basically just go. I'm gonna catch that 13. Right, on, on the, you can hear that, it's pretty obvious on the recording. On the way up, I just do whatever. We use those notes, heavily palm muted. And then grab that note. That's about as close as you're gonna get to it. It's kind of doing something like that. When you get here now, we can get back to what he's actually doing. So that's gonna be a, Kind of a pre, kind of a bar dip, scoop it into a nose. Well, that, it's a scoop. Go, so it's a 10th fret there on the G, so a little slight bar dip. 
and then release. Same thing back at that 13 on the G. Um, then 15 on the G. 17 and then 20. I was all on the G string, and then he hits the open A string. And then you, you kind of do a bar dive, and then on the way back up, you're going to pick the G. And that would be the end of uh, Kerry King's solo. All right, so um, then we get to uh, Jeff Hanneman's solo. Goes right into this. This is happens over the chorus, so there's nothing new to learn here. You can just play the chorus riff under it. Uh, so let me play through uh, Jeff's solo for you real quick. So that thing, uh, a little bit more succinct than this solo, you can kind of pick up most of what he's doing. Uh, so this starts with some A minor 7th arpeggios. So that's going to start here off the 5th uh, fret of the low E string. 5th fret of the low E to 8. Then 7 on the A. And then uh, 5 on the D. So we want to go up an octave of that, so we're going to skip up here to the 7th fret here on the D string, play the 7th fret, 10th, 9 on the G, 8 on the B. Then up to the 10th fret there, we're going to do an octave up again, 10th on the B, 8 on the high E, uh, 12 on the high E, and then 15, and then pick that and slide it up to 17. So, with this, from there, we have this phrase. So, we're going to start with the bend at the 17th fret there. So, you're spinning up a step and a half there. And then you're going to have this trill between 15 and 18 on the height, and 12 and 15. Then you're going to jump over. You're going to come over here and grab a, a bend at the uh, 17th fret there, bend and release the 17 on the B string. Release down to 15. And play 17 to 15 on the G. And then the, kind of the same thing. Same thing there in the um, uh, the 15th fret bend, pull off to 13, and then 15, 13 on the G, and you're gonna hold that note there. And then this is the one part that's kind of hard to get ex you know, exactly, except for the very crazy chaotic part, that little tapping thing. But this is so he's basically playing an E minor pentatonic. Up, so just the notes first would just be on a 15, I mean 12, 15 on the low E. 12, 14 on the A, 12, 14 on the D, and 12, 14 on the G. So he's kind of doing, I think he's doing his like kind of stock pattern. Kind of the, but it's really heavily muted, so it's kind of hard to know the exact pattern, but I think it's close to, he, he does this in, in some, a, a few solos. And so I think it's that going on, which is kind of like a Randy Rose. So that's going to be 12, I mean 15, 12, 15 on the um, low E, and then 12 on the A to 15 on the low E, back to that 12 on the A. So, we just, so that's the pattern, and then he just kind of continues that across the scale form. So now starting off the A string, and off the D. But he's kind of going. Kind of working his way up to the to that 14th fret there on the G, 
And that's when he starts doing some kind of wild vibrato with it, with the bar and bending it. And then he's gonna jump into this tapping lick. Now this tapping lick is gonna be like this. So. So what's going on here? He's gonna tap, he uses his middle finger to tap, so you don't have to drop your pick. So you're gonna tap the 12th fret on the B, pull off to eight, and pull off to five, hammer back on the eight, and pull, hammer, I mean pull off back down to the five. So we did. So we do that lick once there, and then you're just gonna move the tapping note up to the 13th fret. And just go back and forth between that, just doing that lick every time, just back and forth between 12 and 13 there on the beat, on the tap. So it, and he's gonna end it, uh, that tapping part on the B string leaves with this, which is a little, a little pinch harmonic then at the fifth fret there on the, on the B. And, and the same thing on the uh, G string, the fourth fret. And this the open G with a little bit of uh, whammy bar on it. And then back to that same tapping pattern on the same frets, but over on the high E string. So it's kind of nothing new to learn there. It's just kind of on the high E string. Then from there, he does this. Uh, and that's just nothing. Kind of working your way up, kind of. You can slide up, pull off to the, the note in the left hand, and then slide that up. And you kind of work your way to the front one. That's random. That's no way you're going to get that exactly like it. That is just a random thing. All right, from there it goes into the main riff again, plays the, uh, the main riff one time. And then it goes to the verse again, and then the chorus with the harmony part added, so like we've already covered. And then it gets to the the same as the, the clean section that we did earlier, but with the distorted chords on this way that I think it's actually a little distortional on the clean on the clean part now, and there's those same chords under it. And then you just do that a little bit and end it with five power chord let that ring and you're at the end of the tune hope you guys enjoyed it. it's got some really fun riffs and as slayer goes it's got some chaotic solos they're hard to get note for note but you can get the general vibe of it pretty pretty well uh, which is kind of what they do with it live too um, you're not going to see these types of solos done note for note they're just it's just not possible there's little licks in there like the tapping stuff that you can uh, but if you watch them play it live you'll see it Especially in the early days, it's quite similar, but not not exactly like it because it's more of like they're going for like a specific vibe instead of giving like a note for note thing that's not what they do. Anyway, but the riffs are absolutely killer and we can play those note for note. So I hope you enjoy doing that. All right, I'll see you again soon for guitarlessons365.com.